My circle riding is like pretty much really fun, which will give me like my legs more stronger and more active. I'm really excited to tell you about the Exer game today. This is a research project that has come out of funding from NeuroDevNet and GRAND, which are both network centers of excellence funded by the federal government of Canada. I'm a developmental pediatrician and a clinician researcher from Holland Bloorview, and what I bring to the research project is a knowledge about uh, individuals with cerebral palsy. And then I'm working in partnership with Professor Nick Graham and his team from Queen's University, and what they bring to the mix are uh, computer gaming knowledge and computer science. We ourselves don't have any knowledge about, um, about cerebral palsy other than what we've learned through this project, and so being able to work together with a group that has this great depth of expertise in that area has been has been absolutely critical. So we've been working together over the last three years to develop the Exer game. What we find with individuals with cerebral palsy is when they're teenagers, their body size really increases and their muscle strength doesn't increase as much. So they become less mobile and they spend more time in sedentary activity sitting around at home. That leads to poor physical fitness and um, a deterioration in their mobility skills, but also it leads to social isolation. So our idea, we developed a stationary bicycle that uh, by pedaling the bicycle, it powers the computer game. We spent quite a bit of time refining the designs of the games trying to find a way of making the games exciting and engaging and action-packed and yet still something that um, children with cerebral palsy would be able to play. So you can see an avatar and the more you pedal the more power you have to play in the computer game. But we've made it even more fun than that. We can set up multiple bikes in multiple kids' homes who have cerebral palsy. They can go online in the Facebook, set up play dates, and play together. So in the computer game, you can see the other avatars of kids that are playing. What we've been interested in is trying to come up with games that have um, a vigorous form of activity. And so that's why we base the games around a cycling kind of activity. And we also felt that being able to play together with other people would be part of the motivation of being able to continue. We've gone one step further in that we've built live chat into the game so they can wear a headset and they can talk to the other kids that are playing. Of the group of kids we were working with, initially only two of the eight kids were able to pedal a device at all. And by the end of the first year, um, through refining the physical hardware, the physical bicycle, we were up to seven of eight kids were able to cycle and to get their heart rates up into a moderately vigorous range, which would be associated with improvements in physical fitness. What we've shown in the research is that yes indeed, we do have a increase in cardiovascular fitness. We really do drive their heart rate up and more importantly perhaps we're showing that the social connectedness is something that the teens really value, that they've made new friends and they feel less socially isolated. How, how did you think it felt? I was got looser sometimes. Uh -huh. Good. That was easier to walk. Our dream is to bring it forward and to bring this out into the real world so that it's not only kids who are involved in our research studies, but kids all over the world who can be cycling together, whether they have cerebral palsy, some other neurodevelopmental disorder, or uh, just that you want to play and have some exercise. So stay tuned.